really tested me a lot of times, but we had a, 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 a friendship, you know, and, and I says, boy, I'm going to hit you so hard. You know, he did something to me that really kind of upset me. But, you know, we were kidding around. I was just kidding around, and he knew that. And I said, boy, I'm going to hit you so hard. He said, you don't need to do that. Where you want me to lay down at? <laughs> You laugh, but that's some Christians. <laughs> Can't even take a blow. <laughs> Yo, they put some crazy stuff on Facebook. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Sometimes I'm out of curiosity, I just play it. And and this guy is getting on somebody, ah, ah, screaming, insulting, and I mean, you know, I'll, I'll bust you up. Ah, and this guy's looking at him, and the guy's pushing him and pushing him, and finally the guy just gave him one shot. Pow! <laughs> How many of y'all know talk, big talk ain't enough unless you got something to back it up? Spiritual warfare is no joke, and fighting the spirit of depression is just one area that we better, be, we better know how to deal with. Because depression is real subtle. It don't just start, you, just don't, you just don't wake up in the, in the morning and just go, ah, ugh. <laughs> it don't just happen, it, it's a process. Yeah. The spirit of the, he, he sows, look, this ain't working now. Look at, the devil is good at pointing everything that's not working right in your life. Because he loves when he can get you to focus on the 20% that's bad, and then you lose sight of the 80% that's happening good. Depression is that place where you're so overwhelmingly, I mean, you almost feel like you're just like you, you, you some of y'all don't even know why you feel so depressed, but you're so unhappy. There's a feeling of unfulfillment. I'm talking, I feel, I feel so feel the presence of God. And it's no wonder, you, you saw what it did to an amazing man. I mean, he had his issues, he had his bouts, whatever it was. But the devil took him out way before his time. Now his kids got to grow up without a daddy. How many of y'all ever been so angry? I mean, when you're really upset, sometimes you do some crazy stuff. Well, I remember one time I was so angry. Oh, I hit that gas pedal. Whoa, ah, and the stop sign came. And I said, I better hold on. Don't be that angry. <laughs> But immediately the devil's there. Go ahead, blow through that stop sign. Amen. Really? Are you crazy? How many of y'all blow through red lights? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now, since the camera's I can download. Now I can download your video. That means, yeah, you get so angry sometimes, you're why? You peel rubber, and you just get in so enraged, you don't think straight. The devil knows that when you're so upset, you, you will say the wrong thing, do the wrong things. I thought, listen, I, God only knows the fact of how, and God's word says a lot about depression. Hallelujah. And sometimes we're so stuck at something that didn't work years ago. Years ago. Some years. I'm, decades. Decade is like more than 10 years. And you're still depressed about it. And it's affected. It, it, that means that you've been stuck. Stuck. 
at what happened. <laughs> Ever notice other people, get, they go on with their lives and you're still stuck. When God speaks about liberating you, he wants to liberate you, spirit, soul, and body. In your soul, in your mind, he wants to liberate of all those things that ensnare you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Don't. Listen, things, sometimes we, we are disillusioned by a lot of things, but don't let the spirit of depression get in there. So we have to know what, what, what depression is. What is it? What does it look like? What is it, you know, um, you, you know, and oftentimes there's, I did some research and, I, I, you know, there was a bunch of stuff that they have mentioned, and I'm just going to just share a few of them. But it says, you know, that, you know, the loss of interest to those that you love. It's almost like you, you sometimes people get so depressed that they look at their family as the problem. And I'm sure they contributed to it. <laughs> and that spirit of depression tries to come in and try, you know what, you, you just, because he wants to steer you away from God's perfect will in your life. I want to read to you something, and I'm going to go back and share a few more things concerning what depression looks like, but I want to, I want to show you how a man of God struggled with that. Saul, King Saul struggled with that. And unfortunately, it got to the point he was so depressed, you know, that he lost everything because of his continuous disobedience. His sin was so, he was so consistent with his sin, the Spirit of God departed from him. And he, and he gave place. He gave place. David, a man after God's own heart. David, that slew Goliath <laughs> by the Spirit of the Lord. David, who, I mean, became a great general, a mighty warrior. David was depressed. If you read, if you read uh, Psalms 51, that's, his, that's the Psalms he wrote after Nathan exposed his sin with Bathsheba. He was depressed. He, was, he felt horrible. Sin has a way of doing that because, it's, you know, so long as you keep it hidden. That's why he says, if you confess your sins, confess it. He says, oh, Lord, create in me, restore in me a right spirit. Amen. Renew in me a, a contrite, that means broken, humble, submissive spirit. Thank you, Lord. First King chapter 19. Here we read, now here's the interesting thing. Before this event happened, we see prior to this in verse uh, uh, chapter 18 and 17, we see Eli, I mean, you know, he says, you know, he tells the, God's people, how long are you going to be caught between two, two opinions? Who are you going to serve either? Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve Baal? Who are you going to serve? And then he says, you know what? Let's, let's settle this. Everybody meet me at, Mount, at the bottom of Mount Carmel. And we're going to settle this once and for all. What a mighty man of God. Prior to that, you know, he was so upset. He stood in his, in his office as a prophet. And he says, you know what? You, know, you people are so ungrateful, so rebellious, so stiff-necked, that it ain't going to rain until I pray for it to rain. Everybody saw him. <laughs> but three years later, and everybody's dying, and nobody can find food, they say, uh, all of a sudden they remembered. You remember when the prophet said that? King Ahab said, well, go get him. Go get him. And so for a period of three years, this man of God, I mean, doing the work, 
Finally, he's on the bottom of Mount Carmel. All right, what, who are you going to serve? Decide now. The God that sends fire, he's the one we're going to serve. We all know the story. But there's some intricate thing in here, man. They came, and there were specific things he did. He says, the God that sent you, you have your altar over there. I'll do my altar over here. And, and you set up whatever you got to do. And so, and the God, the God that sends fire, he's the God we're going to serve. And everybody said, all right, all right. Even the, the prophet, the, uh, the Baal's prophet, there were over 350 of them. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll. And they're praying, and they set it up in their own, you know, religious ways. And they're, and they're asking God, and they're praying. And, and Eli, the prophet, he's looking. He says, well, maybe your God's asleep. And the Bible says that Eli started mocking him. Well, maybe, maybe he just don't hear you. And he begins to mock him. And they're, and they're so desperate that they go, ah, 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 started cutting themselves. A spirit. A spirit. Cutting themselves to spill blood to get God's attention. So glad you were with us here today. I trust the word of God richly bless you. For the continuation of this message, meet us here, same time, same channel, next week. May the Lord bless you as you increase in the knowledge of his word.